So now we start, we start studying other binyanim or binyans of the ancient Hebrew. And I need to tell you that there are seven main binyanim or binyans in the ancient Hebrew. And the first one that we study is called Pa'al, or sometimes it is called Kal. Kal is uh, from the word Kalal, and Kalal means light. So uh, this binyan that we studied is considered the easiest one in ancient Hebrew. And I need to tell you that this binyan is like most common. So usually the words are uh, that we occur in the Hebrew Bible, usually they occur in the binyan kal or pa'al. By the way, the word pa'al, uh, po'el in Hebrew is a verb. Po'el is Hebrew is the verb. And uh, pa'al or po'el means to do. So uh, the verb is uh, the uh, something that is doing is done or uh, is being done. So pa'al is to do and uh, po'el is the verb. And uh, here we have uh, the system of bin yanim or bin yans. And uh, there are uh, seven of them and you can find it here on this, on this page. So I make it a little bit. Yes, yeah, so you can see all of them here. And pa'al is the first one. Sometimes uh, I know that uh, some people like to, uh, to portray these binyans as a uh, menorah. So do you see menorah has seven, seven branches and there are seven main binyans in, in Hebrew. And uh, some of them, uh, two of them uh, correspond to each other, like uh, they have like a couple. So pa'al is active binyan. And the couple of pa'al is nifal, because this is the passive binyan. So if pa'al is active action, so if you want to say uh, something in a passive voice, we need to use nifal. Uh, mostly it is a passive, has passive meaning, and sometimes it has a reflexive meaning. And we will speak about it a little bit later. And the example is like, if we take the word shabar, shabar is to break. So nishbar is, uh, it was broken, or he was broken. So do you see this is the passive meaning. The next one is pl, and pl it's very difficult to explain the meaning of PL and even scholars are confused about it. But uh, the most uh, common uh, um, explanation of PL is that this is an intensive action. So it is more intensive than uh, the action expressed by Pa'al. So if we put, if we take the same root, Shavar, and we put it in PL, so it will mean like he shot it into the pieces not just broken, but it was just smashed into the pieces. So it is more intensified action. But I just want to tell you uh, right now, just make uh, some uh, note about that, that not always it is like this. And sometimes PL, uh, just an active action, the same as Pa'al. And not all verbs uh, occur in both uh, binyans, in Pa'al and in PL. Sometimes the verb has only the form of PL and doesn't have the form of Pa'al. Like for example, the, the, the word Barach, to bless. It doesn't occur in, uh, okay in Pa'al, but it occurs only in PL. And it doesn't have any intensified meaning, just to bless. Barach uh, or Birach, Birach, Birach. And uh, the same form is davar, to speak. It doesn't occur in pa'al, but occurs only in uh, binyan uh, pl, which means uh, uh, he spoke like deep bear, and it occurs very, very often in the Hebrew Bible, and it doesn't have any intensified uh, meaning. Okay, the next one is pu'al. And pu'al is very, very easy because pu'al is a passive from pl. And the next one is hit pile. And hit pile is, uh, oh, sorry, he feel, he feel. He feel is 
causative binyan, and uh, it means like somebody, uh, somebody uh, made uh, an action on somebody else. So, for example, he made something or somebody big, he uh, or he made somebody a king over Israel. And usually it is translated into English with this construction. He made or he make, he makes or he made something to be done. Okay, and we will speak about it a little bit later. And Hofal is passive from Hifil. And the last one is Hitpile, and Hitpile is a reflexive Binyan. He made himself great. Hit uh, Gadel. Uh, this is the system of uh, binyanim or binyans of the Hebrew of the Hebrew language, but I need to tell you that uh, yes, so this is a, a table that shows that not all the um, not all those meanings uh, could be just easily derived from the meaning of the stem. Uh, because sometimes, sometimes the meaning could be completely different in, in many binyan, binyanim. For example, this word hala, to become weak, tired. In nifal, to be exhausted. In pl, to appease, to flutter. And do you see this meaning? It looks like it doesn't connect at all with the meaning in pa'al uh, or in other, in other stems. Uh, pa'al, to be made sick. Uh, to make ill, to be severely wounded in Hofal, hit by L, to be sick, to pretend to be sick. So do you see sometimes we need just to consult the dictionary to understand the meaning of the verb in a particular, in a particular binyan. Uh, okay, um, so now uh, let us continue uh, some other binyans or binyanim. Uh, except these seven basic binyans, there are some others. And for example, if I open for you accordance, in accordance, uh, you can find uh, the list of them. And it is like more than about like 20 different binyanims, binyanim in the Hebrew language. But uh, the good thing is that those uh, very rare binyanims uh, they do not occur very often. They are very, very rare in, in Hebrew, and we will not even pay attention to them. And all of them uh, are derived from, from other languages. Like, for example, in Aramaic, we have not seven binyans uh, or stems, but we have nine different stems. Uh, in Hebrew, only seven, but in Aramaic, nine. And uh, in other languages, uh, the, the number of uh, binyanim is different. So uh, some of them are derived from different, different languages. And we will not pay attention to them except one word. And this word is very, very prominent because it occurs uh, 170 times. And this is the verb for worship. The root is hava. Do you see? But it occurs only in this rare binyan. So it never occurs in Kal, in uh, Piel, Poal, Nifal, Hithpael, but it occurs only in, in the binyan Hishtafal, Hishtafal. And the form of this uh, verb is like this, like for example, in Katal, it would be Hishtahava, Hishtahava or hishtahavita, hishtahaviti, in yiktol yishtahave and eshtahave. Uh, there are some forms in vayikto and infinitive construct. So these are the forms which are attested in the Old Testament or in the Hebrew Bible. And uh, when you try to identify the root, the root is just this. And everything else is just a prefix, is a prefix of a binyan. So that is why this word uh, causes some problems, especially for the beginners. But later on, you will be 
easily you will easily identify this route because it is not very very difficult uh, okay so this is one word that i would like you to uh, to memorize to remember because it is very very common 170 times in the hebrew bible you can find it and uh, for the first time when you read it uh, you could be confused but later on uh, you will be easily identified it okay is it clear so far okay so let's continue yeah. now let us go to the uh, second binyan and it, it is called nifal nifal so uh, uh, nifal the meaning of uh, nifal is a passive and it's it, it's very actually easy uh, to to remember and uh, nifal if you remember the name of the binyan it can help you to identify the vowels of the uh, binyan for example uh, what we need to do we need just to add prefix in in katal we need to add prefix ni and make uh, the vowels according to this pattern nif al yeah so nish mar nin tsa nish ma and so on and so forth and it will be he was kept he was found he was heard from shamar matza and shama um, so is it clear so far Must every word that starts with the knee be a nifal? Although we have to be very careful because it could be a first uh, person uh, plural of, uh, of yiktol, of kal, because do remember it is uh, niktol, niktol, uh, we, we will kill, yes, or nishmor, nishmor. Uh, we will keep and in this case we have to be careful because it could be a kal or paal a first person common plural mm -hmm. so what makes us see the difference between okay only the vowel. and the other way yes o only the vowel nish more nish more but in nifal it will be nish mar or okay. nim tso we will find but in the uh, nifal it will be nim tsa uh -huh, okay okay Thank you understand you. the difference yes so that is yes, why we yes. have to be careful and uh, because of this the same prefix uh, it could be confusion sometimes Yes, and uh, sometimes it has a reflexive, a reflexive meaning, and some verbs have a reflexive meaning, and we will see it in some other examples. Uh, okay. And one more thing that we need to remember about the meaning of uh, binyan nifal is that some verbs have an active meaning so they are they are attested only in nifal stem but they don't have a passive meaning but they have an active meaning and these are the word uh, laham uh, so in, in, do you see in the vocabulary we don't put vowels here because this verb doesn't occur in kal stem it occurs only in uh, nifal stem and it means it means uh, he fought or to to, to fight. Yes, nil ham will be the form. It it never attested in the kal stem, and it has a active meaning, not passive meaning. Or for example, uh, shava. It also occurs only in nifal stem, and it means to swear. He swore. Yeah. Or uh, the the verb the verb uh, nimlat malat the root is malat he ran away. Also, it is attested only in uh, nifal stem and it has active active meaning. And so that is why we have to be careful with those with those words. And now let us go to the conjugation. So how the conjugation of nifal is done? 
so we need to remember this is the cutout conjugation and uh, it is very easy to do it. So ni fal, so it will be nik tau, nik tau. Uh, the third feminine is done by adding a prefix kamets hey. So it will be nik te la, uh, nik tau ta, nik tau ta, uh, nik tau ta, nik tau ti. Uh, so the same as in, in, in kal, we need to just to add the suffixes of the of the catal conjugation and we will have uh, the nifal conjugation of of catal of the symbol so do you see that is why if you know the uh, very well the cal system it's very easy to make a root for any other verb in the hebrew bible if you know just the principle so you need to remember niktal and after this you need to add the suffixes of the conjugation to, to this root and we will have the form. Okay, is it clear? And the same about the plural form. Niktalu, niktalten, 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 niktalno, niktalno. Mm -hmm. So, so far, is, is it clear so far? Okay, so now yes. let's go yes. to, to yes, Prof. let's go to Yikto. Uh, with the Yikto, we have a little bit, it is a little bit more complicated, but not, not very much. So the form would be Yik Kartel. So pay attention to this uh, important issue. It has Dagesh Forte in the first radical or in the first consonant of the root, and it has Kamets as a vowel. Kamets and Dagish Forte. And these two indicators uh, will, will always help you to identify that it is a yikto of Nifal, especially Kamets, because this Dagish, if the first uh, letter of the root is uh, uh, guttural, it cannot take Dagish. So you will not have Dagish here, but Kamets will be here always. And this Kamets. I will help you to identify that this is a verb in Nifal stem. So yikatel. So how we can translate it? We need to translate it in the future. Uh, so katal is to kill, and he uh, not just not end. He will be be uh, he will be killed. Yes. Tikatel. She will be killed. Tikatel the same form. You will be killed. Tikateli, uh, uh, you uh, feminine will be killed, and ekatel, I will be killed. So the same with the uh, plural, plural conjugation. Ekatelu, uh, tikatalna, tikatelu, tikatalna, and nikatel, nikatel. So this is how the Yikto form is, is done. Okay, so is it uh, clear? Do you have any yeah. questions? Okay, so let's go to other it's forms. Clear. Let's go to other forms. Imperative. Uh, and here we have some uh, difference with the cult system because imperative is done from the, the same, from Yikto but it is done by adding uh, the he suffix to the uh, to the to the form so the prefix of yikto is removed tough and it's, uh, in, instead of tough we have he and here we have uh, imperative he ka tell so it means uh, be killed yes imperative be killed he cut a lee also be killed and it is uh, addressed to, to to a woman to a feminine and uh, the same is for the for the plural he cut a loo he cut of course these forms are not very common but sometimes it, 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 they can they can happen uh, the cohortative is done the same 
Ekatela or Nikatela. So this is Nifal uh, cohortative, and they are done the same way as uh, in Cal by adding to the uh, first imperfect or first dicto. We need to add just a suffix commits commits hey. Infinitive. Infinitive construct has question, 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 question. Yes, please. Question, please. Yes, please. In the translation for this Nepal, yes, Nepal that uh, we have with uh, with that he that we have put, are we also supposed to put the exclamation mark in the translation? Yes, yes, because it's it must be there. Yes. What about the definition? Maybe too masculine. Second, how do we translate it? By the way. Okay, so uh, we have to put be killed. Mm -hmm. He killed. We just say he killed an exclamation mark without yes. the yes. definition that it is masculine or feminine. Oh, um, I don't think that we, we will have it. Yes, okay. we try to do it. Yes, you okay. just ask about the technical issue, how we need to translate it in the... Yes, uh, it's better to, to provide like a second masculine singular be killed or second feminine singular be killed. But it seems to me in the exercises, I just provided several variants. And if you just put it be killed, it will be also correct. Okay? Yes. And cohortative, how can we translate cohortative? Just uh, can you try to translate this form? A catala. Let, let me be killed. Oh, correct. Let me be killed. And uh, in, if it is uh, plural, let us be killed. Let us be killed. Very well. Correct. Infinitive to be killed. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we have to pay attention. It is the same as in the in the call stem. Infinitive construct has the same form as imperative a second masculine singular. For imperative, usually we don't put second because it doesn't have any other form except second. So imperative masculine singular. He cut out. Excuse me, bro. Yes. Well, the, the cohortative, what have we done with cohortative to make us identify the cohortative? So Kamaz uh, Gay suffix. First, uh, uh, first Iktor, okay, Kamaz okay. Gay. So it will be the form of Cohortative. Just if I go. You started with the Aleph there. Yes. Aleph or Nun, because uh, cohortative is always in the first person. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Yes, uh, yes. And infinitive absolute. It is very, very rare. But in case if, uh, if uh, it occurs, it has like two forms Nick Toll, Nick Toll. And hikato, hikato. This form hikato probably is more common, but as I told you, infinitive absolute is very, very rare. Probably just several verbs uh, could have this form, which are tested in the Hebrew Bible, but not so much. Okay, now pay attention to the participles, because uh, it could be a confusion here with the participles. So uh, look at the form of the participle. Uh, masculine, niktal, niktal. Uh, it is the same, almost the same as the uh, katal, third masculine singular. Uh, the difference only with the vowel. Here we have kamets, and here, let me go back. Yeah. There we have patach, niktal, but the difference only in one hour, vowel. So this is is a katal, third masculine singular, and uh, this is the participle, niktal, niktal, okay, niktalet, the feminine, niktalim is a masculine plural, and niktalot is a feminine, feminine plural. Uh, so the plural forms of the participle is easy to identify because this is the verb with im or ot. It could be only the participle, 
the feminine form is also easy to identify. And here, just pay attention that the difference only in, in this vowel, tamets or patach. Okay. And um, one, uh, one more issue that we need to, to remember is how the Vic verbs uh, behave in, in Nifal stem. And uh, the first issue that we need to remember is that if uh, the, the, first, uh, var, the first consonant of the root is uh, gutural, it cannot take shiva. So this is how it should be, but because uh, ein cannot take shiva, so uh, the shiva is transformed to compound shiva, to a compound shiva, and it would be ne mad, ne mad. And the vowel of the prefix uh, takes the same vowel as the vowel of the compound shiva. So, uh, okay. So this is this is the uh, how it is done for for the katal with the first uh, with the first uh, consonant gutural. Yikto, in yikto the same problem, but uh, the problem is that the first consonant cannot take dagesh, and in this case this dagesh uh, comes to uh, because of this we have a compensation and this compensation is the lengthening of the vowel of the prefix. And do you see this dagesh from here goes to, to the prefix, ye, a, met. And in this case, I look at the vowel, kamets. Kamets will help us to identify that this is yikto of uh, nifal. And so the uh, verbs with the first noon, uh, I need to tell you one thing, that not all the verbs can take a nifal stem, especially the verbs which are about the movements, like for example, the verb halach, it, can, it is not attested only in some forms, probably in nifal, but it, does, it cannot have nifal stem because it is even impossible to say in, in passive, uh, like I was going, so it is just just impossible to make a passive from this from this verb. That is why we usually uh, do not have many many forms, but some of them we have. And here in perfect we have assimilation of the uh, noon. So uh, it could be like this: nin gash nagash approach nin gash. But uh, the Hebrew, uh, the Jewish people do not like this uh, combination of the same. Uh, consonants. So that is why these two, Nun and uh, uh, Gimel, are assimilated. And they, from these two, one, one uh, letter appears. But this letter has a Dagesh, Dagesh forte. So the final form is Niggash. And this uh, Dagesh here is Dagesh forte, Niggash. Uh, this is the form. And uh, it is conjugated in, in a similar in a similar way. Uh, in Yiktol, in Yiktol, we don't have this assimilation. Uh, now uh, the roots, uh, the verbs with the first yud, the first root. Here, what is interesting, the original vav, the original vav. Uh, yeah. Uh, appears again. So nifal will be no shaf, no shaf, not ni, but because this is the vowel, so it is a, a form of nifal, no shaf, yi va shef. So now vav here is not the vowel, but the consonant, and participle is no shaf, imperative yi va shef, in infinitive construct the same. Okay, so do you have any questions so far about about this uh, about these forms? Is it clear? Infinitive, sir. What uh, what about the infinitive? The difference. I saw one word looks alike. Yes, infinitive and imperative are the same. Ah, okay. The form is infinitive the same. and imperative. 
Okay. Yes. yes. I saw one of the words that is the same in imperative and the same in infinitive. Okay. So now uh, let us try to, to see the, the text and how it occurs in the text. Uh, for example, Hishamer uh, pen Tishkach et Adonai Asher Hotzi Echa Me Me Eretz Misraim Me Bet Avadim. So pay attention to this expression. Aha, he shamer, he shamer. What form is this? So if it has uh, he, so it could be either, do you see? Either imperative or infinitive construct. How we know that this is, uh, this is the uh, nifal form? Uh, look at this first uh, consonant. It has dagesh forte and it has comments. So if it happens, it is like 100% guarantee that this is nifal. Uh, and this is imperative from, from shamar. Ye shamer lech pen tishkach et adonai asher ahotzi echa me eretz mitzrayim. So take care lest you forget the Lord. So this is imperative and uh, it's very difficult to translate it in, uh, uh, in English, but one of the ways is like to take care uh, lest you forget, uh, lest you forget the Lord. Or the similar, a similar phrase, he shamer lecha pen tashiv et bene shama. Uh, beware or take care, we can translate the same, that you do not take my son back there. And Hishamar has a reflexive, reflexive meaning. So it is not passive here, but in this case, it has a reflexive meaning, take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, so another, another example, Vayashav, Min Ha'am, Esrim, U Shnaim Elef, the Eseret Elafim Nish Nish Aru Nish Aru from the root Sha'ar to remain. So there we also have uh, also have uh, Nifal, and uh, this is uh, Nifal Tatal form. Then twenty two thousand of the people returned and uh, 10,000 returned. So this is, I need to highlight it here right again. So the same. Uh, okay, um, this word, ye asa. Again, you can see uh, comments here. Uh, comments here is an indicator that this is a nifal, nifal stem. But Omer el Pardon? We don't have Dagesh Forte in yes, that we word. don't have Dagesh Forte because it is a good role. Uh -huh. okay. okay. But we have the lengthening of the vowel of the prefix. Okay. Mm -hmm. Make it a little bit. And she said, El Aviha, to her father. Ye ase li hadavar haze. Ye ase li hadavar haze. So, how can we translate it? Here, ye ase, it has, it doesn't have a you, you, you just see form, but it is a just see meaning. Let it be done to me. Hadavar haze. These things. Let these things be done to me or with me. So she said to her father, Let these things be done for me. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. The next one. Vaishma Shaul ki noda David. The Anashim Asher 
Ito. And uh, Saul heard that David and uh, people who are with him, Noda, Noda, like uh, were known or were revealed, had been discovered. And also heard that David and his men had been discovered. Uh, pay attention to this word, Vayere. This is from the root Yara, Yara. And what is interesting in this case, so uh, we, of course, we cannot, we can translate it literally, but it has a, a little bit different meaning. Vayera alive Adonai. Uh, so let's try to translate it literally. Vayera alive Adonai. Uh, alive is to him, yes, the Lord, to him, the Lord, va ye ra, from the root yara, to him, the Lord was seen, if we translate it, uh, if we translate it literally, but it's better to translate it, uh, and the Lord appeared to him, so this root, va ye ra, mm -hmm. Vaira is translated like appeared, but if you translate literally, uh, he was seen. Yes, the Lord was seen by him. But it's better to translate and the Lord appeared, and the Lord appeared to him. And the similar expression, Vaira Malach Adonai, alive. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him, or was seen to him, or something like that okay so is it clear so we just to be mm -hmm. need to be careful with the translation and i know uh, on the practice that sometimes it's very difficult to translate the words uh, when they they occur especially in the passive some students are confused so the, the everything that we need is just a practice uh, okay and uh, the final very very short uh, passage is about the usage of the noun but because it will it will occur in um, in one of the sentences so i decided to make some explanation about it so but actually very often occurs with the preposition le which means uh, and when it occurs with the preposition le it always means alone uh, but uh, also the pronominal suffixes are added to this verb like, for example, if I want to say he alone, it would be levado. If I want to say uh, you alone, levadecha. I alone, levadi, and so on and so forth. So you can add any suffix to this word, and we will have, we will have uh, the, the form. And you can find some examples, some examples of, of these uh, words, of these words here. Um, okay, okay, now, uh, do you have any questions? If you don't have questions, I would like you to practice a little bit more on recognizing uh, the, and translating the, the forms. Any questions? Okay, if you don't have questions, so let us, let us go to the, let us go to the examples. Okay, so these are the sentences that are taken from the Bible. These are uh, the biblical, uh, the biblical sentences taken from the Bible. And uh, let us uh, let us try to translate. Let us try to translate them. Uh, I will try to make it bigger. Yeah. 
Adonai Elohe Hashamayim Asher Lekachani Mi Bet Avi Ve Asher Diber Li Ve Asher Nishwa Li Lemor Le Zarecha Eten Ed Haaretz Hazot Hu Yishlach Malacho Lifnecha U Ve Lakachta Isha Li veni misha. Okay. So does anybody want uh, does anybody want to translate? Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Anybody? And and the Lord, you are good. Not 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 exactly. Okay. And the, first, the Lord, God okay. of heaven. Correct. And the Lord God of heaven. Correct. That. That or who? We can say who here. Okay. Uh, who? Mm -hmm. Who took me? Very well. Who took me? So this is the word lakach to take, and ni is just a pronominal suffix. Uh, a nun here is just like an adjective nun, and e is me. Who took me? Okay. Excuse me, Prof. Yes, please. I don't see who because le is two. <laughs> okay, so uh, do you see here? Okay, uh, we need to identify the root. Okay. okay. The root is lakach. 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 Eh. Lakach. Uh -huh. Lakach. So this is just lakach, but because we have a pronominal suffix here, ni, the uh -huh. vowel, the first vowel was reduced to shiva. Okay. Ha, ha, ni. Uh -huh. Sure. Yeah, who took me from my father's house? Yes, correct. Who took me? Me bet a V. Who took me from the house of my father or my father's house? Okay. And who? And who? Said. Yes, this is uh, correct. This is the, the root davar to speak. But as I told you, it occurs only in PL. And who spoke to me? Yes, and here we have E, E vowels, and these are vowels of the PL stem. And we will study it next time. Uh -huh. Who spoke to me? Mm -hmm. And said. And said. No, no, it's better to say who spoke to me. Oh, and who spoke to me, sorry. Who spoke to me? And who? And who? And this is uh, interesting quote, nish, nishba, nishba. What is nishba? It is root shava, which means to swear. And who swore to me. Who swore to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, the meaning of the root shava is uh, active. So it is in nifal stem, but the meaning is active. And who swore to me, saying, Saying. Uh, okay, and the rest of the uh, sentence should not be difficult for you. Okay, translate. Lezar Acha, Lezar Acha. Zara is the word, is the root. Yes, Zara. Correct. Zara, yeah. It's what is Zara? Zara is to plant. Is to plant. No, 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 no. To sow. 
Zara is to sow, correct, so, but Zara is a seed. Seed, yeah, a seed, yeah. Okay, so how you can you can translate le zar aha? I will give you a seed. No, no, no. Your seed. Le, 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 le. What is le? To your oh, to your seed. To your seed. I will give. I will give. So can you identify this is the word a verb natan? But the first yes. one is assimilated with the taf, and aleph is mm -hmm. the prefix of the first person. To your seed mm -hmm. or to your descendants, I will give. I will give this land. The land. Yes, uh, this land. At Haaretz Hazot. Okay. He, 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 will, okay. take, he. he will take. Yeah, Shalak is to take. No, no. Shall I send. To send. He will send. To send. He will send. Okay. He, he will send. He will send his messenger. Or his angel. His or, messenger, his or his angel. His angel. Yes. Le before. Before. before you. Before oh, you. you, correct. Uh-huh. And he will and, and and you take him and you will take and you will take correct and you will take so pay attention to one thing a wife so mm -hmm. this is this is katao yes 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 this is katao and it should be translated as a past tense mm. but we have here this wav and this wav will change the meaning of the of the conjugation to the opposite one okay so it is a future now and you will take a wife a wife from not from but, uh, lee is for for your son for your son for leave a knee your son not your son leave from there for which son whose son for my son for my for son. my son from there from there sham is there Mish sham is from there correct correct mm. Okay, so the next one. So do you see you can translate already the biblical text? Velo Velo Ikara Ikare Od et Shom Shome Shomha Shomha Avram Avram Adonai. No, 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 no. This is, this is not Adonai, just be attentive. Ah, Ad, uh, Avram Vehaya. Very well. Um, Shome, Shomeha. Shimha. Abraham. Okay. Shomha Abraham. Yeah, correct, correct. And uh, this generation. I've forgotten the meaning of kara. Kara is to call. To call. Uh -huh. And he will call. And his generation. Odd. No, no. Odd no, no. is again or more. And he um, will call again. Will not call. Will not call. He will not call again. Mm -hmm. Okay, correct. Uh, again. name. Or oh, your name, your name, your name. Yes. Uh, Av Abram. Yes, okay, okay. So how can you put it together? And your name will be, okay. 
and your name will not be called anymore Abraham. like anymore Abraham. 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 Yeah. Your name will be. But your name will be. Your name will be Abraham. Abraham. Correct. Correct. The shiwa with the vav changes Hayat to yes, the yes, future yes, tense. Correct. 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 Yeah. Three, four. Abraham. Okay. And Abraham fell. Very well. <clears throat> so, can you identify this is Nafal? To Nafal, to yeah. Yes. And Abraham fell <clears throat> Al Panav. On it, upon his face or on his face? Upon his face, correct. Pane is face, Al Panav upon his face. <clears throat> Why is Hak? And Isaac. And okay. Isaac. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's hack is Isaac, but in this case, it is a, a verb. It is? Verb, verb. <laughs> what does it mean? So do you, do you remember the meaning of the name Isaac? No. To, to, to laugh. To laugh. Oh. Yes. And he laughed. <laughs> and he laughed. <laughs> oh, and yes. Abraham fell on his face and laughed. Yes. And said. And said. Correct. And said. Belibo. Okay. What is that? To. Uh, Bo is to go. No, 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 no. Yeah. This is Enter. a prefix. This is a prefix. Yeah. And this is the sound. And this is the sound. And here we have. Ah, in, in, his your in your yes. heart. In your heart. In his heart. In his heart. Yeah. In his heart. Oh, and this is in his heart. <laughs> okay. Now sure. let's try to understand this one because it's also very interesting. <clears throat> uh, that is uh, the topic we have learned today. Ah, no. So do you see when everything is added to the word, it is very difficult to understand. Okay, I will help you. The root is here. Then. So, correct. So what is aha? Here. Interrogative particle. Correct. Interrogative particle. And mm -hmm. lamet is just a uh, preposition. Yes. Mm. Okay. So let's let's continue. What is mea? Uh, mea. One hundred. Yes. One hundred. Shana. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay, yes. so let's try to translate this one. Ben me a shana without this hale. So this hale just uh, forget about this. And we have only son. Ben son of one hundred. Son of one hundred. <clears throat> yes, correct. Yeah. Son of one hundred. But do you yes. remember that this is idiomatic expression? Son yes. of one hundred, it means that uh, the person who is one hundred years old. Yes. So how can we put everything together? I am son of 100 years. Not, not I, because it's a derogative article. Oh, okay. Like will to, to, me. to the person who is 100 years old. With? You were led. 
And the first one uh, is one to, give to give birth. Yes. Will a woman oh, birth be called to give birth? Pardon, pardon, again. Will a 100 year old give birth? Uh, yes, correct. But do you see this is in passive, give a let. Cause to give birth. Yeah, not, not cause. It is nifal. It is nifal. Yeah. So we need, uh, in order to translate it, we need to provide uh, an additional word. Could a child be born to a person who is 100 years old? Like this. Uh -huh. So mm. a child is not here, but it is implied here. Lady. <clears throat> Could a child be born to a person who is 100 years old? Okay, let's continue. <clears throat> Ve in Sara <coughs> and with Sara again, again. And, and if yes, correct. And if Sara and if, if Sara <coughs> ha but daughter of eighty not eighty Tesha is Yes. Yes. Give birth. Give birth. Yes, correct. This is already uh, a kal. It is not nifal. It is just a kal. Okay, correct. So let's continue. Vaikra Abraham Shem Hamakom Hagu. And Abraham called okay. Abraham called the place. The Shem. What is Shem? Oh, the name of the name. The name of the place. The name of the place. The place. This place. Okay. This is like this. this place. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Oh, of this place. Adonai Yireh. Yeah, Adonai Yireh. In some yeah. of the translations, it ah, is translated, it is just a name. So uh, how we can translate Adonai is Adonai and Yireh is? It's from the root Ra'a to see. So the Lord has seen. Mm. Or some translations say mm. the Lord will provide. Or the Lord will be provide. Okay, Asher Ye Amer. So, uh, what is Ye Amer? Will Amar is to say. Let us say. Yes, what Amar is to say, but uh, what Binyan is this? Ye Amer. Ye Amer is. Uh, Nifal. Nifal. How do we know that this Nifal. is Nifal? Kamet. 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 Yes. Kamet. And do you see uh, this Dagesh from here migrated here? Yeah, Ali. There is no Dagesh here, Ali. but uh, the Dagesh is under the prefix. Mm. Okay. Asher Yamer Hayom. Behar Adonai. Yeah, uh, oh, it's very interesting. <laughs> the days, the day in is today. The city, the is today. Uh, today. Mm -hmm. Today in the mountain. Today in the mountain. Yeah, today. In the mountain. On the mountain. The Lord, the Lord will see. 
Uh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Yeah, right. Hey. Uh, what What about this verb? Yera is the is the is the oh, is the root from Ra, correct? Nifal. It's also Nifal. So do you see? Yeah. So yes. we have one Nifal here and two Nifal here. So let's try to put everything together. So how can we translate Yamer? And now do you see it's very difficult sometimes to put it in a proper English. So we can say like it is being said. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's like a passive, or it could be also reflective, but probably passive is better here. It is being said Hayom. Today. 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 Behar, on the mountain. On the mountain. Lordy. The Lord will provide. See. Uh, no, 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 no. It seems to me that here har is a construct. The Lord is oh. on the mountain or in the mountain of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And now let's put it into the into the passive ye are ye ra e. Is it seen? The Lord provided. It will be. The Lord. No, no. Do you see? On Will the be seen. Of the Lord. And this is just, it will be provided. Provided. Yes. Sometimes it's very difficult to put everything together uh, because uh, not all constructions can be easily translated into another language. In the, in the sentence, um... You said that will be provided. Doesn't doesn't it sound like future? Yes, future. Of course, it is nifal passive, but it is in the future. Okay. Yes. Okay. The the yeah yeah right. Is it what is the root there, Prof? Which one? The last yeah, one. Yeah right. Ra to Ra to Ra. 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 What is Ra? Is Ra to provide or to see? To see. So why do you use the word provide? Okay, this is just like uh, it, it will be seen. Uh, literally, it will be seen. Seen. Okay. But because in English it doesn't make sense, so sometimes it is translated like it is. What has been said? Uh, it, it will be provided. Be seen. It will be seen. Will be seen. So what has be been seen, said? It is a literal translation. So in other words, what has been said will be seen. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, sorry, Prof. Yes, yes. Now, if, if now, uh, in that you are supposed now made to make your your version, how could you make uh, your version to fit now, Doc? I mean, to translate in your own way, because like like in my like. In my national language, it says God will provide, and uh -huh. that is in the future tense. Yes. So we, we can translate it in the future. So this last word uh, should be translated as the future, because it is just yiktol. And yiktol, the basic form of the yiktol is the future tense. Mm. Yes, but here, pay attention to this. This word is also yiktol, nifal. But we, uh, we do not translate it into the future because yiktol has a variety of, of meaning. It can also be translated as a repetitive action. Okay. The action that is repeated uh, all of the time. Yeah, again and again. Again and again. So it is also a possible meaning of yikto. But for our purposes, because we just studied the grammar, and I don't want you to be to I don't want you to, to be confused very much. So we usually turn <laughs> yikto as a future tense. And when you study later on, when you study other uh, classes like Hebrew readings, so maybe in this class you will touch 
the other meanings of the of the yukto and other steps. Okay, but for us, we always when when in the exercises when we have yukto, we need to translate it as the future, and if we have katal, we translate it as the past. Okay, so let us let us continue. We have called Nishmai Bates Par O Paro Lemor Banu Bau Bau Ahe Yosef. Correct. And the women. Called where, where do you see the women? Uh, oh, Nishima. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Nishima. 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 Remind me, Nishima. Okay, so what is the meaning of it's Nishima? To, it's, it's from Shama and it's Nifal. Yeah, correct. Or, this is from yes. Shama and this is Nifal. Okay. Shama is to listen. Yes, correct. To so, listen. Okay. I'm stuck. Okay. Just if it is a fall, we need to put it in a passive, uh, passive voice. Nishma is the, the verb. What is the subject? Okay. Uh... Listen and call. And he listens to the voice of the house of Pharaoh. Again, again, again. And he listened to the voice of the house of Pharaoh. Okay, so can you do a voice, a subject of this sentence? Oh, and the voice of Pharaoh was heard. Yes, and the voice, the voice of heard. Yes. <laughs> Oh, and the voice of the house of Pharaoh was said, saying. No, no, no. The voice was heard probably by the house of Pharaoh. Oh. Come again, please. In, not in the house. The voice yes. was heard uh -huh. in the house of Pharaoh. Yes. Saying, Lemo. Saying. Mm -hmm. Continue. Ba'u Ahe Yosef. Come here. Come is, here. Is. After Joseph. Yeah, correct, correct. What is Bau? To enter. Come in. Enter. Yes. Enter or came. Yes. Can you repeat? The brother me? of. Hmm? Yes, continue. The brothers of David entered. I mean, of, of, your, of Joseph. Yes, <laughs> the brothers of Joseph came. Of Joseph entered. Or uh -huh. and that is probably came is better. Oh, came, came, came. Okay, came. Okay, let me wait for a while, and mm -hmm. I would like to introduce to you some of the modern Hebrew language. Yes, <laughs> Okay, let me let me. Uh, Okay. okay, so what did I what did I write? 
Ma nishma. Ma nishma. It's just, yeah, it should be the question mark in the end, but because it is always a confusion when we have uh, Hebrew font and Latin font. So ma nishma, what is ma nishma? Can you translate it literally? What you hear. Uh, no, nishma is passive because it is nifal. What you heard? What did you hear? What was heard? What, what is was heard? heard? What was heard? Oh, what was heard? Oh. Yes, correct. What was heard? And uh, this is a, a common uh, greeting in, in Hebrew, in modern Hebrew. So, for example, uh, people when they meet each other. They usually ask the question manishma, and the the meaning is what is heard, and it is very very similar to Swahili. Yes, habari za usubuhi or habari za mchana. What the news of the morning or the news of the day? So they ask the same question: what is heard? So what kind of news do you have? And uh, this is in Nifal style manishma. And how do they usually answer? So there are many, many different ways how it can be answered. The same as in Swahili, for example. Uh, they just can say uh, like call, uh, call, and just tov. And it means call tov means? All is good. All is good. All, all is good. Yes. They also can say Beseder. Beseder is an order. Like Beseder, everything is all right. Yeah, yeah. so some of the ways uh, how it can be answered. Oh, uh, the same um, greetings. Uh, and uh, I saw on, on Sabbath, somebody of you just uh, did it, use it. Is, yeah. Uh, Mashlom ha. So what does it mean, Mashlom ha? It is not Nifal. But these greetings we can address to men. If we can uh, to a man. Mashlomech. Yes, Mashlomech. Mashlomech. To, mm -hmm. Mashlomech is to a woman. So can mm -hmm. you translate it literally? What does it mean? What does it mean? Shalom. Peace unto you. Shalom is peace. Yeah. If, or mashlom ha, if you translate it literally, it will be what is your peace. What is peace? What is your peace? What is your peace? How is your peace? Yes. How is your peace? Yes. So this is uh, several ways how the how people greet each other in, in modern Hebrew. In modern Hebrew. Uh, okay, it is just uh, it is not the part of our class. It is just to. Uh, just for us. And let us come back to our to our class. Uh, can we spend just... Uh, just bring back the screen, Prof. I just wanted to take a photo. Uh, do you want to me to... Okay. Yes. I... <laughs> we want to use them. <laughs> you write. Don't take a photo. Write. <laughs> ah, yo. Right. My writing things are far. <laughs> it will take long. <laughs> okay, please take a picture. Thank okay, you. let me take a photo too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, so Thanks. Can, can I go back to... Yes. Yes, yes, Prof. Uh, so can we spend about like 10 more minutes together translating? Because I think it is important for us to, to have this practice of translation. 
Okay, next sentence. Excuse me, how did we finish the previous sentence? We say come in Joseph or? Oh, the brothers of Joseph came. Oh, Joseph came in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go, go and go correct. So lech is imperative from halach. Let's go. Yes. I think I'm looking this very close. Safat, like this. Asta? No. The Asaf. The root is Asaf. Asaf, correct. What does it mean, Asaf? Together. Together, yes. So go and. Go oh, and gather. And gather. Yeah. So uh, just a little bit more about the Hebrew syntax. So it, it is also not part of our class, but uh, usually they, they don't use many imperatives going together. But if the first word is imperative and after that another verb follows, so both of them should be translated into English as imperatives. So the first mm -hmm. imperative, um, like saturate the meaning of the following verb. So if it is imperative, the next one is usually also imperative. But this is syntax. This is not a grammar. This is a little bit advanced. Mm -hmm. So go and gather. All the old. At the, the old, old men of Israel. The old the Lord elders, or the elders, elders, elders of, or the elders elders of Israel. Of Israel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, speak to and you will say, yes. Or, say to them. So it is the same as here, it can be also translated as imperative and to say oh, and say to them speak. Yes. okay pay attention to this word alechem to them to them or upon them yes oh. oh no no it is just to them it is to them mm -hmm. okay the lord the lord adonai yes the lord, lord god, god, lord god of your fathers of your fathers, of your fathers, of yes. his father, our Lord fathers, I will take him your fathers. Has seen your okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. Has seen it is not has seen because it is near a and near a is nifal. So we need to put it in into the oh, passive. Was seen. Was seen. Was seen. Ah. But it is better to translate. Was, provided. was seen mm -hmm. to me. Do you see? Was seen. Was seen to, to me. me. But it is oh, better appeared to translate. To me. The yes. Appeared to me. The Lord uh, or yeah. God of your fathers appeared to me. Appeared, appeared to, to me. me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Elohe. Abraham. The God of Abraham, God of Abraham Isaac, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob. And Jacob. Lemon. Say, 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 I will visit. I will visit. Huh? I will visit you. You. At hand is you. So what is this one? Pakot. I will vi to visit. Visiting, visiting, I will visit you. <laughs> no, no, no. What is punish? Uh, tell me the 
the conjugation. It's what pakat. Pakot, pakati. Okay, yeah, correct. It's pakat. So what does pakat mean? To visit. Visit or punish. Or punish. Or punish. So it yeah. depends on. No, but it's the, the, yeah, the context does not take. But it is in the context. I can visit to punish, or I can visit to <laughs> to visit to bless. <laughs> to bless. Yeah. Yes. So in this case, uh, but uh, what is interesting for me is not the meaning of the root, but the meaning of this uh, aspect. What aspect is this? Pa kod a o a o a o. It's infinitive uh, absolute. Correct. This is infinitive absolute. So how can we translate the entire sentence or this clause? Pa kod pa kat ti et hel. Visiting, I will visit you. Uh, no, it's better to translate. I, I surely. Oh, I surely will visit you. Uh, and it's better to put it in the past. I surely visited. Uh, I have surely oh, visited okay. you. So I have already done okay. it. Because Pakati okay. already uh, cut off. Okay, yes, that's true. That's cut off. Okay. So let's All continue. right. Okay. So it's, it's, it's similar to, to, okay. To the to the example that you made of you shall surely die in the previous yes lesson. yes yes the same the same okay. I, I will surely or certainly oh, I surely have visited visit you. and visit okay. you yes okay. to visit and visit surely visit you Okay, let, let us skip this one because it seems to me there is no uh, there is no nifal in this sentence. Uh, let's let's go to the next one. Translation. Or you want just to for, for practice we can translate it just for ourselves if yes, you yes. want. Okay. Can you try? Where haya? Do you remember if we have where before the uh, before the katal, it will change it to the future. Where haya? So we can translate it as like, and it will be. And it will be. So key. So key in this that... case, it's better to translate as if. Uh, most of the time it is uh, okay. course, uh, but in some cases it could be also translated as if, and it will be if, like, like. if you are no, it, it, it's not Nepal, it is just uh, Kal. Yeru. Yeru. So this if is you see, it, if not, you see, not you, because it is a uh, yut here, and yut here is the third person, always third person. Okay. If they. Oh yeah yeah. Or who is if they? If they see. If they see. Otecha, otach, otach. You, if they see you, yeah. if they see you, and who are they? If the Egyptians, if the Egyptians, if the Egyptians uh, see, see you, you. where am I? And say, oh, and they, they say, say, say to you, okay. they say, Ishto no. Zot. 
you uh, use uh, this to this, this woman. This uh, they say uh -uh. ishtor. So what is ishtor? Ashet is a woman. Is a woman of right. yes, and or mm -hmm. is correct. Correct. Somebody. Uh, somebody mm -hmm. Uh, Pastor Breffa told uh, the correct answer. His wife? His wife. This is his wife. And they say, this is his wife. Oh, this is his wife. Okay. They will kill me. And they will kill me. Me. Mm -hmm. The Otech Ve Otach Ye Ha You Me and You and um Otach. Otach. What is Otach? So the no. same as here, Otach. Is you. You. And you. And you. Will be. You will. So a uh, Haya, not, not Haya, but do you see the first letter is Het, not Hey. And mm -hmm. there are two similar roots, Haya and Haya. Haya is to be. And Chaya mm. is to live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So uh, we can, uh, but here, uh, right. this term you don't know because and you will he feel. And this is they. Do you see you here is they. And they will make you to live or you will. Uh, Spare. They will make they it. They spare your life. They will kill me, but they will spare your life. So you will leave. Okay, so it's a little bit difficult for you to translate. Yeah. So do you remember when Abraham was in Egypt and mm -hmm. he uh, mm -hmm. said that his wife is not his wife but his sister? Yeah. But we don't have uh, we don't have uh, Nifal here. Oh, we don't have it as well. Um, okay, let, let's try to translate this one, the, the last one, the number nine. And, be, and behold, I will go yes, I today. Will. Today. But then I call her Arats. On the way. On the way. On the way. The land. Of the On the way of all of the land. Yes. What? Of all this the land. Is, yeah, this is the idiomatic expression. To go uh, into the way of the all land means actually to die. Mm. So, and he meant, mm. behold, uh, I am going to die today. Okay. Uh huh. And did it, did it him. Mm -hmm. Uh, v that term. So, what is the root? Yada. Yada. What does Yada? It mean? To know. To know. Go down. Huh? To know. They will know you. To know. To know. They will know you. 
you. And they will know you. And you will know. And you know, and you will know. And you will know, because here we have Vav here, and it is reverse the meaning of uh, past into the future. And you will know, he, that. That, that. Excuse me, Pro. Yes, yes, please. Why don't we consider 10, 10, 10? Yes, we, we consider 10 is you. <laughs> you. It, uh, it is Katal, second okay. masculine plural. Okay, okay, okay. And Thank you don't you. know. He, because uh, here uh, is better to translate as that. For that. That. Lo Not fall. fall. Not fall. Not yes. fall. Uh, who didn't fall? the word? The davar a hat. Hat, hat is first. First, yeah. one, one is better. One, no. one, yeah. So you will, and you will know that even one word didn't fall. didn't fall. You are one word, eh? yeah. Even one word. Uh, you, 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 you know, you know that one oh. word will not fall. Nicole, of all the words, from all, from all the words, of all the good words, of all the good words, good words, yes, correct, good words, that, 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 uh, the Lord your God spoke, okay, and let him, to, to you, to you, to you, so uh, how can we, how can we translate it in a better English? So this in, uh, this is also idiomatic expression. Lo yeah. davar echad. So it means that uh, nothing not what is remains. Nothing will fail. Yes, correct. So, oh, will not, oh. so these are the words that Joshua uh, said uh, in the end of his life. Okay, so uh, I think that we have a good practice of translation and now you have some skills of how to translate uh, the, uh, just, uh, the, the last thing I would like to, to, uh, to speak to you is just- oh, to... May I ask a question before you continue? Yes, of course. Is it in this? Will we will, will, will learn um, in the syntax, in the class on syntax, uh, the different idiomatic expressions and how to best translate them? Uh, or uh, we'll, we'll gather those skills as we, yeah. as we practice. Uh, I'm not sure yet uh, because uh, most probably Dr. Malak will teach you uh, the Hebrew readings class. And I think it is good because you will have like two different approaches to learning uh, Hebrew. He has his own approach and he, uh, he has his own methods how to teach. So uh, it depends on him. I don't know how we, he, he will prepare the material for the class, but what you will do, what you will definitely do, you will read a lot. That is why this class is called uh, readings. So now, do you see, we pay a lot of attention to the grammar and we need to learn the grammar, all the uh, endings, all the prefixes, all the uh, grammatical aspects. But after that, after you already know the grammar, uh, you, the task of the next step is to teach you how to read and how to translate. So you will read many, many different texts and we will try to understand what kind of expressions mm. are there. And most probably you will encounter some idiomatic expressions of the, of the Hebrew Bible. Yeah. Okay, so uh, one more thing I would like to, uh, to do right now, and this is the final one for today, is um, let's try to translate some of the verbs. Uh, let's practice it from, from the exercise. Yeah.
Okay, so uh, let me make it bigger for you. So the word is evalet. All the verbs in the exercise are in Nifal stem. They were born. Why they? So this one. You need to translate this one. Uh, this one is already translated. Uh, okay. This is just an example. So how can we translate? But he was born. He was born. He or oh, sorry. He was born, but. Uh, what is the aspect? Masculine. Huh? Is it yiktol or katal? Yeah, correct. It is nifal. Yeah, but is it yiktol or katal? Yiktol. Yiktol or katal? Katal. Why? Why is it katal? Uh, katal is ni fal. Katal should have oh. ni. But yikto, uh, the uh, feature of yikto is the kamets and dagish forte. You are mm -hmm. that. So if it is yikto, how should it be? Yes. It will be okay. born. Okay. <clears throat> Try to translate this one. The root is Shava. Shava, correct. What does it mean, Shava? Missing. Listen. No, Shama is to listen. Oh, oh no, no, it's not listen. This Shava is the word Shava means to swear. To swear, okay. Sleep. Mm -hmm. Sleep. Or to swear. Yeah. Uh, swore. We need to translate it with the with the pronoun. Who swore? I swore. I swore. Yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, why do you say like this? Because this is the ending. Ending. The first person. Yeah. The suffix is and first remember person. Remember that the root shava is katal. Uh, yes, it is katal, and it is active. So, in spite of the fact that it is uh, nifal, but the meaning is. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is Yiktol. Yiktol, correct. Um, I will build. build. But it is Nifal. So we, we should make it a passive. I will, I will huh? continue. I will be built. I will be built. <laughs> yes. 
Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By the way, it occurs yeah, in the Bible, especially. It's not easy. It's not easy. That is why I do it to, together with you. So it occurs yeah. in the Bible, for example, when uh, Rebe- not Rebecca, uh, Rachel, uh, when she didn't have children, she said to, to Jacob, take uh, my sor- maid servant, and maybe uh, I will be built from her. So this is the biblical word. Mm-hmm. They swore. Okay, correct, correct. Okay, I think it is enough. Uh, we did just several of them, and you will continue. Uh, so let us see, uh, did we do correct or not? Okay, so do you see, of course, we, we just started uh, from fourth, I don't know why. Um, but it was correct. The first one, he will be born. I saw. I will be built. And they, they saw. Okay. So uh, I hope you understood how we shall do this exercise. And everything mm-hmm. else in this, in our class, in, in your assignments is actually um, as usual. So what, what should you do? Let me see. You see, you need to, uh, of course, like always, the vocabulary quiz, the missing word assignment, uh, the translate the verb uh, assignment, this is what we practice, the text, uh, the king and two prophets, and when you read the, this text, you will encounter, of course, some Nifal, like for example, some Nifal uh, verbs here. And you will need to translate the text and answer the questions after, after the text. And of course, the module quiz as usual. So nothing is, nothing is special. Everything as we did before. And next time we will try to translate the text that was given for us. We will do the same as we did today. Okay, any any other questions? So if you don't have questions, we can we can finish our class for today. Sorry, 